Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Thursday edition of the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. I'm Dan Lobby with Mary Kay Cabot and Ashley Bastock. Coming up later in the pod, we will have Lance Reisland. He's going to give us his top five free agents and then some honorable mentions. Uh, we're going to get into free agency, too, before that. But let's start here. Bubba Ventrone, we had a chance to talk to him today, uh, an introductory press conference, an introductory Zoom call, I guess, with Bubba Ventrone. So let's get into kind of what we heard from him. Mary Kay, what stood out to you hearing from Bubba today? Well, one of the things that I really wanted to know and sort of explore with him is, you know, what are his, his thoughts on Cade York? What are his plans for Cade York? He's very, very high on Cade. Uh, he had him ranked number one. He scouted him coming out of LSU. Really liked him a lot. Cannot wait to coach him. And I think if he has the same impact on Cade as he had on Chase McLaughlin after he left here, uh, then I think that, you know, Cade will be, as I just wrote, kicking pretty. Now, that's going to get changed in my story probably within the <laughs> next hour. But what the heck? I threw it in there anyways. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, I think he'll have a pretty good impact on Cade York. I think he understands special teams as well as any special teams coach in the NFL. And I think Cade's going to like him. I think he's going to like his energy. And I think he's going to be really, really good for the Browns second year kicker. Yeah, Ashley, I think that was maybe the most interesting thing is him just coming out and saying, this is the guy that I thought was the best kicker in the draft last year. And now I get to coach him. So that was a pretty ringing endorsement. Yeah, and I think especially given some of the problems that Cade had this year, and I think he's also like really well suited, and we asked him about this, to coach a guy who is this perfectionist, given all the other people he's been with throughout his career, both as a coach and playing. Of course, we know about his relationship with Phil Dawson here in Cleveland and that connection that I think could benefit Cade a little bit more. But he just seems really like to be the right guy to help Cade work on the things that Cade has said he has to work on, especially like with moving on after a missed kick and not getting so caught up in the fundamentals that you're not trusting your process. So I do think that was definitely something everyone was probably interested to hear about with him and to hear that Cade was the number one guy that he had when he was going through that draft process, I think is encouraging if people were starting to question like, oh, is this the guy who can get it done in terms of being able to kick in Cleveland? Okay, so Ashley, what kind of stood out to you listening to, to Bubba? Yeah, I think for me, it's just overall like his energy. And I know like I didn't get to cover him when he was a player, but I know, Dan, I think you were the one that asked him about what makes a good special teams player. And he kind of gave this, I'm trying to find it right now in our transcript here um, about aggress being aggressive, tough, smart, disciplined. I mean, he talked for a few minutes just kind of outlining all of those traits. And I do think like that unit has been missing some fire over all these last few years and obviously doing simple things right. And he just strikes me as a guy from everything we know about his career, from where those special teams units ranked when he was in Indianapolis, um, that he, he can kind of make an impact in that way. And I do think like we talk about special teams coordinators typically having that kind of fiery personality. And I think that's to me what jumped out from behind the computer screen. Yeah, Mary Kay. I mean, this is a guy who has been a special teamer. That was how he made his made his living in the NFL and then immediately jumped into special teams coach. It feels like this is sort of a rare path to uh, to where he is right now. Um, but, you know, you can tell that he definitely has like the know how the, the passion to kind of do this and, and do it really well. Yeah. And the thing that I really did like about him, too, and Ashley uh, mentioned this as well, is that he is. Uh, just going to rep and drill those fundamentals. I mean, that is what is so vitally important and what has been wrong with these special teams, these Cleveland Browns special teams over the last four years or so. They just haven't had the little things down, you know? I mean, just every time you look out there, something was going wrong with not recovering an onside kick or getting a kick blocked or, you know, missing a kick or, you know, not you know, or giving up a long return or something or getting penalties, right? So, you know, they really are going to, uh, you know, rep it over and over and over and, and really have all that down. That's how you become a good special teams unit is by paying attention to detail. And I'm sure one of the places or two of the places he learned that uh, were from Brad Seeley, the Brown, former Browns, excellent special teams coach, and Bill Belichick. I mean, Bill Belichick is so big on fundamentals. 
uh, that that's what you're going to see here. He's very heavily, heavily influenced by those two guys. And I just think you're going to see a real clean operation. And then I, I guess for me... It...